Welcome to the annual Let Freedom Ring celebration, jointly hosted by the Kennedy Center and Georgetown University as part of the university's ongoing Let Freedom Ring initiative, honoring the legacy of Dr. King. Please welcome the Let Freedom Ring Celebration Choir, the Let Freedom Ring Band with members of the Georgetown Jazz Ensemble, the Georgetown Department of Performing Arts, soloist Ronette Harrison, and spoken word artist Messiah Remkissoon. And in his 16th year, please welcome Nolan Williams Jr., CEO of New Works Productions and the Let Freedom Ring Celebrations Music Director. On February 29, 1968, the Kerner Commission recommended that the nation release its report. The report warned that the nation was moving toward two societies, one black, one white, separate and unequal. To prevent that, it recommended that the nation enact a comprehensive federal open housing law. 35 days later, Martin Luther King Jr. was tragically killed and riots broke out in urban centers across the country. To honor King's legacy, President Lyndon B. Johnson pushed Congress to pass the Fair Housing Act. The act was purposed to implement individual housing discrimination and foster greater integration in communities across the country. But 50 years later, we have failed to meaningfully enforce it. The reality is that blacks and whites, even those with similar incomes, still largely live in separate worlds with separate opportunities, separate access to home loans, separate retail amenities, and separate funding for schools. So, this King holiday. Let's begin by addressing the uncomfortable, unsung subject of equal access to fair housing. Own. When the loan you were denied is the loan the guy less qualified took and bought him a home because the guy less qualified looked like he was born in Rome. Just looking, Just looking for a fair chance to a buy fair a chance. Nice house in the neighborhood you wanna live. You wanna live. Just looking for the same chance you give to someone else. American dream, American myth. Just looking for a fair chance to buy a nice house in the neighborhood. American dream, American men. Believe that you can achieve the lies they tell. When reliance move, when I say move, dwell where I say dwell. Even when we cross the gates into a new area code, we get profiled like Henry Louis Gates, breaking into his own place of abode. Past the Fair Housing Act. But we know they don't play fair Wanna get up and go But you're stuck So you stay here In this American dream American myth Just looking for a fair chance To buy a nice house In the neighborhood you wanna live Just looking Just looking for the same chance You give to someone else American myth Believe that you can achieve Staying woke among late sleepers Who ate the hate on the bait Of these neighborhood gatekeepers Imagine paying rent, not because you want to, 
but having to Simply cause racism said I don't want you on my avenue They're rather you at the bottom of the totem pole Sometimes it's the politicians Highest on the voting poll Bankers, real estate agents, property owners Versus the people and equal opportunity loaners The onus is on you, it really is Housing is a civil issue In case you forgot what civil is For too long we suffered at the cost of your privilege Housing is a civil issue In case you forgot what civil is For too long we suffered at the cost of your privilege American dream, American myth Still living in this not looking. If I have money, change the rules. The dream of the myth. American dream. Or is it the American myth? Not looking. Ain't it funny? How they switch the rules of the game? Based on your race, your status of fame, the dream of the mess, the dream of the mess, to live it, to live it, to know it. Prejudice still exists, just as most times with it. Ignorance is in bliss, not even when hit it. What's funny about a black woman? Ain't it funny to live the dream of the myth? I ask, from whom was the agency given to determine where I can live or where I'm forbidden? Believe that you can achieve the lies they tell. When rally it's move, when I say move, dwell where I say dwell. Even when we cross the gates into a new area code, we get profiled like Henry Louis Gates breaking into his own place of abode. Past the Fair Housing Act, but we know they don't play fair. Wanna get up and go, but you're stuck, so you stay here in this American dream, American myth. American dream, American myth. Darkness can't drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate can't drive out hate. Only love can do that. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Long live the king, but still I fear. Fear. I might be leading my people, American dream, American myth. Thank you, peace and love. Please welcome Carrie Mutombo, a senior in Georgetown College, majoring in government with minors in psychology and African American studies, who will be giving tonight's invocation. All those who are willing and able, feel free to join me in prayer. Heavenly Lord, today this community gathers together, multiracial, multi-ethnic, and multidisciplinary to honor the legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the remarkable others who have followed his footsteps and the path you have set before them. Lord, throughout our lives, we aspire to follow and match your leading, hoping to positively impact the lives of those less fortunate. We are thankful for those who are being honored today. Coach John Thompson Jr. and this evening's award recipient, Hawa Kasat. Both these men, through their dedication, their charity, and sacrifice, have committed their lives to the mission you have set before us all. 
We also thank you, Lord, for the voices of the Let Freedom Ring Choir and our special guests, Audra McDonald and Brian Stokes Mitchell. May their musical gifts inspire us in other ways to go forward and use our talents, whatever they may be, to effect change. Lord, we pray that you continue to bless us and keep us throughout this evening, this week, and the months to come. These things we all pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Deborah Rutter, president of the Kennedy Center. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. For the last 17 years, we have been so proud to partner with Georgetown University and its president, Jack DeJoya, to help bring you this incredible event. I want to say thank you to Carrie for her beautiful invocation, and especially now, I'd like to say thank you and congratulations, I'm looking back for my friend, Kennedy Center co-chair of our community advisory board and the director of this amazing choir, Nolan Williams, and his incredible Let Freedom Ring Choir. Will you join me in saying thank you to them? I know you'll hear more about it, but this choir comes together for you for this evening only. And it gives me great pride and a lot of joy that people love to come together to make music and to sing. It is the most human of acts, I believe. On days like today, and really every day, it is important for us to recognize and honor individuals who embody the ideals that Dr. Martin Luther King espoused. Hope and compassion will always be necessary in our world. And we applaud those who break down barriers in the pursuit of a more just society. So I'd like to offer my heartfelt congratulations to tonight's recipient of the John Thompson Jr. Legacy of Dream Award, Hawa Kasat. And I think he's just over here. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Nothing like having 2,300 people celebrating your work all here together. Tonight's performance is a part of the Kennedy Center's Millennium Stage program. For over 21 years, the Kennedy Center has offered a free program, just like tonight, every single day at 6 o'clock. What do you do every day at 6 o'clock? <laughs> Hopefully watch us, because we're in addition to the live program, we stream it. So we have had millions of patrons from all over the world experience the arts for free here in the Kennedy Center and wherever they are. We have very generous donors who make that possible, and I'd like to ask you to join me in saying thank you to our presenting sponsor, Centene Charitable Foundation, and our co-sponsors, Target, and the Jay Willard and Alice S. Marriott Foundation. Finally, and really most importantly, thank you for coming together. It is by sharing experiences like tonight that brings hope for us as individuals and as a community. It is a way for us to honor individuals and especially to honor the extraordinary work and life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So I hope that you have a wonderful evening and thank you for being here. Please now welcome Jay Yezzy, District Team Leader of Target. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah, and good evening, everyone. On behalf of Target, I'd like to thank our gracious hosts, Deborah Rutner, David Rubenstein, William Doyle, Dr. John DeJoya, and everyone at the Kennedy Center and Georgetown University. What a special night we have in store for us, being able to enjoy the amazing talents of Audra McDonald, Brian Stokes Mitchell, 
Nolan Williams Jr., and the Let Freedom Ring Choir. It's inspiring to be here tonight with people from all walks of life as we celebrate Dr. King. His life, his work, and his legacy that fuels American spirit of freedom, equality, and service. At Target, we believe in the mission to support and strengthen our communities, where we live and where we work. We have always been deeply connected to the communities we are lucky enough to call home. By investing in the places where we operate, we create more sustainable communities for future generations of our guests and our team members. Beyond dollars, our giving also includes time, talent, and expertise of Target leaders and team members. Every year since 2014, Target volunteers have contributed more than one million hours of volunteer services in the communities where we do business. Thank you. Whether we are helping to beautify a park, donating food to the hungry, or supporting disaster recovery efforts, or building soccer fields in underserved neighborhoods, our team is ready to roll up their sleeves to keep their communities vibrant and more resilient. On this day of celebration and remembrance, let us honor the legacy of Dr. King and all those who came before us by extending a hand to help those who will follow us. And on behalf of everyone at Target, thank you for letting us join in the celebration and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Nolan Williams. Well, good evening, everyone. Oh, that's so staid. Good evening, y'all. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful that we're able to gather in this place every year? And I want to begin to, uh, by thanking Deborah Rudder and Jack DeJoya for making this possible. This is amazing that the nation's capital has this kind of celebration on the King holiday. So can you join me in just celebrating them for their leadership and their courage? I'm honored to stand here tonight uh, in my 16th year as music director for Let Freedom Ring, um, but also as CEO of New Works Productions. And it is our honor to music direct this event in collaboration with Georgetown University and the Kennedy Center. Uh, lest we forget, 2019 marks the 400th anniversary of the first shipment of Africans to a North American colony. 400 years later, African Americans are still striving to obtain the level of equality for which Martin Luther King Jr. fought and died. Equal access to education and health care and healthy foods and housing, equal wages, and equal justice under the law. And so And speaking of equality, allow me to share with you a seemingly random list of activities. Follow this. Operating a lemonade store, golfing too slowly, waiting for a friend at Starbucks, barbecuing at a park, working out at a gym, campaigning door to door, moving into your own apartment, mowing the wrong neighbor's lawn, shopping for prom clothes, napping in a university common room, asking for directions, not waving when leaving an Airbnb, redeeming a coupon, selling bottled water on a sidewalk, eating lunch on a college campus, riding in a car with a white grandmother, babysitting two white children, wearing a backpack that brushed a woman accidentally working as a home inspector, working as a firefighter, helping a homeless man, delivering newspapers, swimming in a pool, shopping while pregnant, driving with leaves on your car, trying to cash a paycheck, and even talking to your mama on the phone in a hotel lobby where you're staying. These are the documented cases for which the police were called in 2018 to investigate black people for non-criminal activities. And if, and if this list sounds absurd to you, which it is, 
Imagine what it feels like to live with the constant threat that even when you work hard and play fair and follow the rules, you're still assumed a suspect and presumed guilty. Sadly, 55 years and five months later, King's words really are still a dream that his children would one day live in a nation where they would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Still a dream. That's why programs like this are important. And that's why I'm compelled every year to push the envelope, lest we come here to sing songs and make us feel good, then leave without ever addressing at least one of the elephants in the room. I saw a staggering article a few weeks ago. It reminded me that by the end of Dr. King's life, public opinion had dramatically turned against him. And that's because bucking the status quo is never popular work. Truth is, we as a nation have selective tolerance for people who dare to speak truth to power. While it's easy for us to celebrate King now, please recognize that were he alive today, King would be found in some unpopular places saying and doing some unpopular things. He'd be in Flint, Michigan, asking why people there still don't have clean drinking water. And he'd be on Capitol Hill. Boy, would he be on Capitol Hill. <laughs> demanding that our nation still make good on its promise for equality, of equality for all people. And believe it or not, somewhere in the process, I just believe that, knee, that King would be taking a knee. So, so here's what I hope. I hope you enjoy the program. But as much as you enjoy the program, I hope you recognize that when we leave here, we've got some serious work to do. And I hope that more of you in the audience or watching online or watching the archival video will open your eyes to see what's going on right around you. Hope that you will better empathize with the plights of those for whom simple tasks like eating their lunch or hanging out in Starbucks are made more complicated simply because of the color of their skin. We need more people who will stand up for what's right, more everyday advocates for change, more everyday champions for justice. And in this spirit, the choir is coming with the second selection this evening. I've composed this work, drawing inspiration not from the words of King, but from one of his contemporaries who used his influence to fight on our behalf. And I hope as we share this work that the lyrics will wash over you, literally. And that, that metaphor will make sense in a few minutes. I hope that the lyrics will inspire you. I hope that they will convict you to join the fight. Please receive again the Let Freedom Ring Choir and Band actors from Georgetown University's Department of Performing Arts. They've already performed, aren't they bad? Come on and give it up for them. And also receive our special guest soloist from season 14 of NBC's hit show, The Voice my friend and brother, Ration Lamar. Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others, or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. And crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, 
Those ripples build a current that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Each time we stand for our beliefs, and each time we give someone relief, we skip a stone across the water that sends forth small ripples of hope. We give hope. Each call for justice we demand. And each grave injustice we withstand is one more stone across the water that send forth small ripples of hope, of hope. And we may never know how far those ripples go. We may never see their impact, but we know the more we agitate the water, Are bathed with the light till every child has equal rights. We must skip stones across the water. in every land and every time who want to stop history in its tracks. They fear the future, mistrust the present, and invoke the security of a comfortable past, which in fact never existed. But we must propel society forward toward a new decency, justice, and peace. Ripples of 
Each year since 2003, Georgetown University has presented the John Thompson Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award to an individual or a group who has demonstrated outstanding service in Georgetown's Jesuit tradition of being women and men for others. The award now celebrates the extraordinary contributions of Washington, D.C.'s most inspirational community leaders, bearing the name of a man who himself became one such inspirational leader when he came to Georgetown as the head men's basketball coach in 1972. Coach John Thompson Jr. set an example for all of us. Born in the heart of Washington, D.C., John Thompson Jr. matched his extraordinary ambition with unparalleled commitment and hard work. I lived in Frederick Douglass Projects on Alabama Avenue for 10 years, but I had every single thing I wanted. I never wanted anything that I didn't have because I knew damn well I couldn't go in the house and say, give me a bicycle, <laughs> you know? Leading his high school to multiple championships, he earned a scholarship to Providence College. He went on to the NBA and played for championship Celtics teams, and later he would find new success coaching basketball at Georgetown. They gave me an opportunity, and it had to be a conscientious effort on the part of them in 1972 to hire an African-American. You don't just say, come in, uh, with your resume and come in and go before a committee. Oh, bingo, here we got this black man. But when they got me and hired me, they permitted me to be me. Coach was famous for keeping a deflated basketball on his desk to remind his players that the game wouldn't last forever. You don't want young people to think the sum total of their life is nine or eight pounds of air in a basketball. One day that ball is going to stop bouncing the air <laughs> is gonna leave that ball. So you use the game to prepare yourself for life after. He transformed his students, he transformed his team, bringing a new level of excellence to Georgetown basketball and ensuring that 97% of his students graduated. In 1989, the NCAA put forward Proposition 42 a proposal regarding eligibility for participation in athletics, which would disproportionately harm students from disadvantaged backgrounds. Coach Thompson became one of its most visible opponents, leading the fight against it, walking off the court in protest, and boycotting two games. He helped bring the issue to national attention and eventually led the NCAA to modify the proposition. Today, his legacy lives on because he stood tall so too have countless young men. I think it's more important in life for those kids when they leave here, they use the good education they got here at Georgetown and they go out in the world and apply what they did and they try to help somebody else or try to educate somebody else. The John Thompson Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award has created new ways for Georgetown to serve our community as women and men for others. Ladies and gentlemen, John J. DeJoya, the 48th president of Georgetown University. Well, good evening. It's wonderful to be here with all of you tonight for this celebration honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his enduring call for a more just and equitable world. And as we've just seen in our film, we gather too at recognition of the leadership of Coach John Thompson Jr. and the profound impact that he has had here in our community, in our city, 
and on the larger questions of racial justice, equity, equality, and opportunity in our nation. In honor of these two individuals and their transformative contributions, we gather this evening to bestow this year's John Thompson Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award to Mr. Hawa Kassat, co-founder and executive director of One Common Unity here in Washington, D.C. This year, we mark what would have been Dr. King's 90th birthday. In an essay, An Experiment in Love, that he wrote 61 years ago, in 1958, when he was just 29 years old, he explored an idea that he returned to many times throughout his life, the idea of agape, an idea found in Christian scripture, which refers to, in Dr. King's words, more than romantic love, more than friendship. It's a transformative idea, one that provides for us a starting point, a prerequisite for the work of building community, one that begins with profound respect for the value and dignity of each person. Dr. King tells us, quote, agape is not a weak, passive love. It is love in action. Agape is love seeking to preserve and create community. It is an overflowing love which is purely spontaneous, unmotivated, groundless, and creative. It is a recognition of the fact that all life is interrelated. It is a willingness to sacrifice in the interests of mutuality." Close quote. This ethic of love is the foundation for our work, for our lives together, for the kind of community that we seek to build and to sustain. This concert, this celebration, this recognition of extraordinary service is an act of love, of remembrance of a man who loved each of us for our own sakes in a city that we are grateful to call home. When we reflect on the contributions of one common unity and the leadership of Hawa Kassat, we see love in action. We see a spontaneous, unmotivated, groundless and creative love. We see an expression of mutuality, of interconnectedness, of community. Let me show you what I mean. It is my pleasure to share with you now a short film on this incredible organization and its leader, Hawa Kassat. One Common Unity is what's been needed really in the city for so long. It's a community of people that really takes folks that have been exposed to violence and other terrible things sometimes that happen in people's lives and bring them outside the city. They don't just try to apply one approach and one size fits all to every student. You walk into One Common Unity or the Fly by Light program and you're embraced, you get to be yourself, and you get to be there over time. They feel being out here, a certain aspect that they're not judged, and then they can open up and talk more about their feelings, talk more about who they are. When I come to Fly by Light, it's so many different people who have the same, they're looking for the same energy I'm looking for. And like when I come here, it's refreshing to be around so many positive people. To be able to sit there and kind of remove them from the center of the trauma and get them to open up. It requires a really deft hand. And for Hawa to be able to do that was really remarkable. Literally, like what are shifts you can make this week, next week, the week after, to start moving your way into that space. The way that Hawa has brought this work into this community is by bringing light and supporting young people to shine their light. His commitment over the last 20 years is why OCU still exists in Washington, D.C. I see a lot of 
organizations come and go in this city, and OCU is not one of them because of HAWA. You, you might not be able to break the cycle of, of, of poverty and homelessness around the whole country, but like we can start with like our home. Because it's my dream that Fly By Light is, is meant to do one thing, it's, it's to, to help just make all of us as better people. Hawa is peaceful, energetic, and fun. He's a yogi. He's able to transcend, I think, the day-to-day -day din that we always are exposed to. Too many people who run nonprofits are so set in one way of doing it that they're unwilling to adapt to continue to make change. And he's not, he's not like that at all. He's very creative and thoughtful about how he keeps the mission going. How is consistency and dedication to the program without fail that's allowed it to flourish the way that it is? It leaves me like I got into this work because it's my calling. It's what makes me feel good. When I wake up in the morning and know that I do something that I'm passionate about, something that's helping make things a little better than they are, and just kind of stay persistent. It's a shared burden, you know, we all have this responsibility to come together and we can do so much more when we work together. And that's, that's kind of the growth of one common unity. And uh, it's been just beautiful to watch. Mr. Cassatt, for the opportunities that you provide for the work of formation, for the extraordinary transformations that you have inspired, for your commitment to healing and restoration in our communities, and for believing in our young people, we are grateful and honored to recognize you. So please join me and Coach Thompson in recognizing this year's recipient of the John Thompson Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award Hawat Kassat of One Common Unity. And thank you all for being here this evening. I hope you enjoy the performance. Ladies and gentlemen, this year, for the very first time, we are honored to present two award-winning artists joining us for tonight's Let's Freedom Ring celebration. Please welcome two-time Tony Award winner, Brian Stokes Mitchell, and Tony, Grammy, and Emmy Award winner, Audra McDonald. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Thank everybody. You. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Yes. How is everybody? Good. Nice. Nice. Man, what a joy to be on the stage listening to these young people, this choir back here. Incredible. Yeah, I was backstage thinking we better turn it out tonight. <laughs> uh... Set the bar very high. Yeah, they sure did. Stokes and I were talking backstage about the fact that uh, even though 21 years ago we performed together um, on Broadway in Ragtime, 21 years ago, just so crazy. And we've done one-offs um, before and, you know, sung at benefits and stuff. We've never actually done a concert together. Yeah, so this is our first, actually. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what a great day And to, do. to be here to celebrate this incredible man, this legend, 
without whom I know we wouldn't have been able to live the lives that we have been able to lead, lead up until now. Um, to, to give back and to honor him is an incredible honor and blessing for us. I, I feel so grateful to be here. I, I feel grateful too. So what, what do you say we just start singing some songs? You okay. Feel like well, so, and since you have the prettiest voice in the world, what do you it. say you start? How I'm about gonna that? kick him off the stage and I'm gonna sing okay, first. Okay, let's do it, all right. So, <laughs> Audra McDonald, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I chose that song. You know, I mean, all the songs that Stokes and I have chosen for this evening's um, concert are songs um, uh, that, you know, are inspired, I think, by Dr. King and his legacy and his words and his, his ideas. And I think about that song, and I think about the dream that he had for his children and everybody's children of seeing them rise up and take to the sky and live their life to the most awesome potential they can with the safety of knowing that they are respected and treated as equals and uh, revered and cared for by all people, which is why I chose that song. The next song I'm going to sing is a song that was written by Julie Stein. And I was looking at some, some quotes of Dr. King's that, I mean, you know, we all do it every MLK day. We read his quotes. I mean, maybe some of us read, you know, Letter from a Birmingham Jail, you know, just to remind ourselves for at least the day, but hopefully we can live it throughout the year for every year, which is what he would have wanted us to do. And, um, I found two quotes that really speak to the heart of the next song that I want to sing. So I'm going to read these quotes of Dr. King's and then I'll sing this song just to put it all into some context. Dr. King said, I am convinced that love is the most durable power in the world. It is not an expression of impractical idealism, but of practical realism. 
Far from being the pious injunction of a utopian dreamer, love is an absolute necessity for the survival of our civilization. To return hate for hate does nothing but intensify the existence of evil in the universe. Someone must have sense enough and religion enough to cut off the chain of hate and evil. And this can only be done through love. He also wrote and said, those who are not looking for happiness are the most likely to find it because those who are searching forget that the surest way to be happy is to seek happiness for others. The sound of applause is delicious. It's a thrill to have the world at your feet. The praise of the crowd is exciting, but I've learned that is not what makes a life complete. There's one thing you can do for the rest of your days that's worth more than applause. The screaming crowds, the bouquets. Make someone happy. Make just one someone happy. Make just one heart the heart. You see. Mitchell. 
bird flying high You know how I feel Sun in the sky You know how I feel Breeze drifting by You It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. I'm feeling good. Fish in the sea, you know how I feel. River running free, you know how I feel. Blossom on the tree, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good Dragonfly out in the sun You know what I mean Butterflies all having fun You know what I mean Sleep in peace when day is done that's what I mean And this old world is a new world And a bold world For me I'm feeling good Stars when you shine You know how I feel of the pine You know how I feel Freedom is mine I know how I feel It's a new dawn It's a new day It's a new life
Don't allow anybody to make you feel like you're nobody. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good tonight because of what the celebration is about, about who the celebration is about, about the spirit uh, of this, uh, this celebration as well. And it's a joy to be here with you all, too. It's a joy to be back here on the Kennedy Center stage. It's, uh, this feels like a second home for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Washington, D.C. feels like a second home for me. I've had a lot of shows that originated here. The last show that I originated here started uh, uh, at the National Theater, uh, not too far away. And a show, it was a show called Man of La Mancha and went on. And uh, I have a dream. To dream the impossible dream. When I was doing that show on Broadway, we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the March on Washington. And to sing that song with those words, thinking what I was thinking in my head while I was singing that song was nearly overwhelming to me on that stage that night. Thinking of Dr. King and his work and his legacy and his words and his inspiration and his hope and his dreams that he gave us. Some people might think that a song called The Impossible Dream is not the right song. Impossible Dream? Nah, it's about possible dreams. That's what he was all about. What's possible? But here's the interesting thing. The song's not actually called The Impossible Dream. The song is actually called The Quest. When I talked to uh, Mitch Lee, the composer of it, when I first started doing the show, uh, he said to me, well, this, this, this song is, 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 is like climbing Everest, but it's not summiting Everest. It's about the climbing of it. It's not about doing the impossible. It's about trying to do the impossible, trying to get to the moon, trying to get to Mars, trying to end racism, trying to climb Mount Everest. Because we can't do anything without first trying. Only by trying can we get to the mountaintop. To dream the impossible dream. To fight the unbeatable foe. To bear with unbearable sorrow. To run where the brave dare not go. To right the unrightable wrong. To love pure and chaste from afar. To try when your arms are too weary. To reach the unreachable star. This is my quest to follow that star. No matter how hopeless, no matter how far, to fight for the right without question or pause. To be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. And I know if I'll only be true to this glorious quest that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest and the world will be better for this that one man scorned and covered with scars still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable stars. This is my quest to follow that star. No matter how hopeless, no matter how far, to fight for the right without question or pause. 
to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. And I know if I'll only be true to this glorious quest, that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest. for this that one man scorned and covered with scars still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable Roger McDonald, ladies and gentlemen. It's too bad he doesn't have any talent, is it? It's, 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 he's not even good looking. Poor guy, he's just got nothing. <laughs> oh. um. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring it down again for a little bit. Stokes does the big, I do the thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that in a good way. Together we're a good combo. <laughs> um, this next song I'm gonna sing is actually two songs put together. Um, songs written by great Broadway legends, Rodgers and Hammerstein and Stephen Sondheim, respectively. And, um, I want to read two more quotes by Dr. King that I think very much pertain to what these two songs are about. <clears throat> we must remember that intelligence is not enough. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. And then yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> And say this one with me, because I know you all know it. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by... So think about those two quotes as I sing these two songs. <clears throat> What do you leave to your child when you're dead? Only whatever you put in its head. Things that your mother and father had said, which were left to them too. Careful what you say. You've got to be taught to hate and fear. You've got to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drummed in your dear little ear. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people whose eyes are oddly made and people whose skin is a different shade. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught before it's too late, before you are six or seven or eight, to hate all the people your relatives hate. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be carefully taught. Yeah. 
careful the things you say children will listen careful the things you do children will see and learn children may not obey but children will listen children will look to you for which way to turn to learn what to be careful before you say listen to me children will listen on children sometimes the spell may last past what you can see and turn against you careful the tale you tell that is the spell you've got to be taught to hate and fear you've got to be taught to be carefully taught children will listen children will listen you've got to This next song I want to sing before we bring Stokes back on. Um, I can't believe I've known him 21 years. That's weird, because I, I was only four when we met. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I shouldn't tell fibs like that. <laughs> Not so close to a Sunday, what's wrong with me? Anyway, <laughs> this next song I want to sing is another song by Rodgers and Hammerstein. They were good with the inspirational songs, weren't they? And Dr. King was good with the inspiration, wasn't he? And this song is a song from a show that I never in a million years any, thought anyone would ever cast me in. <laughs> um, I, I don't look very Austrian. <laughs> um, but uh, I so enjoyed playing the part of Mother Abbess in Sound of Music when we did it live on television about six or seven years ago. <clears throat> And I, I never thought that uh, that song, that song, uh, would come to be a song that I would sing over and over and over again um, since playing the role. But it has brought me such comfort, and I hope has brought comfort to other people to keep on going, which is something that Dr. King knew all about. And so I want to close with this last sort of um, quote I want to read of his and then sing the song with that context in mind. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow. I still have a dream. Climb every mountain, search high and low. Every 
every stream, follow every rainbow till you find your dream, a dream that will need all the Man, this is fun just to get into, stand over there and listen to Audra sing. <laughs> like you guys are, I'm like just doing the same thing you are. This is just so much, what a delight. Uh, I just am crazy about, about Ms. Audra McDonald. Um, uh, about a year ago, year and a half ago, uh, my phone rang. I got this uh, phone call and it, it was Steve Sondheim. That's the sound of a name dropping. <laughs> and uh, he asked me if uh, I would uh, sing a song that he wrote uh, for a, uh, a benefit uh, performance he was being honored for. And I said, oh, I don't know that song, Steve. He sent me the song, he sent me the song, and I fell in love with the song. Um, as it turned out, I, I wasn't available. I actually had a concert on the night of the benefit. But I, I just loved the song that he wrote so much that I asked him if I could you know, start singing it in, in my, my concerts. And he said, absolutely. So I've been singing it ever since. It's interesting. It's an interesting song because it's, it's a patriotic song. But it's a Steve Sondheim patriotic song, <laughs> which you know is going to be interesting. And uh, it's a song that not very many people know because it was actually cut from a show that he was working on about 30 years ago. So very few people have actually uh, heard this song. And um, I love this song and I started singing it because somehow 30 years ago, Steve Sondheim wrote a very prescient song. It's like if somebody asked him, write a song that we need right now for, for this country right now. Uh, we need a patriotic song, a new kind of patriotic song. Will you write it? Um, I think this is probably the song that he would write. You can gripe all you like you can sneer where are the heroes you can shout about how everything's a lie then that flag goes by you can gripe at the greed at the need to be a winner at the height you keep hearing from on high and you think why try and you wanna cry then that flag goes by and you think that's why that's the best idea that's a really good 
good idea What you want to do is brag I'm part of that Yeah, I know it's just a flag Okay, but still For a minute you say Hey, we could, we will Fix everything tomorrow For a minute you're aware You're feeling proud And then suddenly you're staring at the crowd And you're thinking there's no link I can see they're as different from me as they possibly could be Then you see the idea And you know it's a dream And you know it isn't perfect And at times it may seem to go awry Then that flag goes by And no matter how you sigh It's the bright blue sky It's just ma and apple pie There's this thing you can't deny This idea that it's fixable tomorrow There's a chance, there's a choice We can change ourselves tomorrow We're in charge, we've a voice An idea about tomorrow To remember when the flag has gone by. Right? This song really doesn't need an introduction. It's uh, maybe my favorite song in the entire world. I love this song because it's, it's so simple. It has maybe 100 words in the entire song, but I think that's what really makes for a good song, you know, like a haiku poem. An entire universe is created from these 100 words. I think you'll all know this song makes me feel good. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Skies of blue and clouds of white. The bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of the people passing by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, How do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry I watch them grow They'll learn much more Than I ever know And I think to myself What a wonderful world
colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of the people going by i see friends shaking hands saying how do you do they're really saying i love you i hear babies cry i watch them grow they'll learn much more than i ever ever know and i think to myself what a wonderful world and i think to myself everybody sing with me what a wonderful song just make your heart feel good <laughs> oh man that makes me so happy to sing that song I am uh, really really pleased to be doing this uh, next piece because I get to do it with uh, uh, Reverend Nolan Williams jr. and the uh, let freedom ring choir and orchestra um, Audra uh, mentioned that uh, 21 years ago uh, when she was four and I was seven um, <laughs> we got to do a, a, a show called Ragtime. So I'm gonna close, thank you. I'm gonna close my part of this set uh, with this, this song. Uh, this is a song that uh, is one of the last songs that my character Cole House Walker sings. Of course, uh, Ragtime, written by E.L. Doctorow, kind of about this country and our trials, our tribulations, our hopes, our dreams, our failures, our getting up and trying to climb that mountain again. That's what Ragtime uh, is about and written from the point of view of uh, the early 20th century. And uh, here we are in this part of the uh, 21st century and some of those things have uh, have gotten a little bit better and some of those things seem a little bit stayed the same um, but it's again it's about trying to climb that mountain right that's what it's about it's about the journey and this is a song that Cole House after going on this this kind of wild crazy angry mad rampage after his his love of his life uh, is killed for a very wrong uh, reason. He kind of goes on this crazy rampage and starts doing the same thing. And uh, it takes Booker T. Washington to come in and, uh, and talk Cole House out of the place where he is at. And he really hits him by talking about his son uh, that he has and talking about the future and what is it going to be for his son, and kind of in that epiphanal moment for him, Cole House realizes that uh, he can't keep doing what he's doing. Um, he realizes that uh, darkness cannot drive out darkness, right? Only light can drive out darkness. So this is a song that Stephen Flaherty and Lynn Ahrens composed for Cole House to sing to his men as he knows he's walking out the doors to probably a certain death. Go out and tell our story. Let it echo far and wide. Make them hear you. 
make them hear you. How justice was a battle and how justice was denied. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. And say to those who blame us for the way we chose to fight that sometimes there are battles that are more than black or white. And I could not put down my sword when justice was my right. Make them hear you. Go out and tell a story to your daughters and your sons. Make them hear you. And tell them in our struggle we were not the only ones. Make them hear you. Be demanded by ten million righteous men. Make them hear you when they hear you. I'll be near you again. Once again, Miss Audrey McDonald. Um, I'm, you know, I was like, well, if Stokes gets to sing with this choir, I get to sing with this choir too. <laughs> and to work with you, Nolan, um, your your work is beautiful, um, and your message is even more beautiful. So thank you. This is a song that you all know, and uh, if you feel the need to sing along, I understand. <laughs> I'm looking at some of you out there, and I know you will sing along. You won't be able to help yourselves. <laughs> but um, its message is one of unity and the fact that we are all held in a place of love. <clears throat> Sometimes I grow weary of all I see, of tumult and mayhem all around. Then I call to mind these words of peace and let my song resound. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the sun and the moon in his hands. He's got the sun and the moon. He's got the sun. the birds and the bees he's got the birds and the bees in his hands he's got the birds and the bees in his hands he's got the birds and the bees in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got the woods and the waters in his hands, he's got 
got the beasts of the field in his hands he's got the little bitty babies in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got you and me sister in his hands he's got you and me I guess we're gonna sing one more little tune. <laughs> and we're gonna send you out into this night that's very cold, but hopefully our hearts are very, very, very warm. <laughs> Carry his message, everybody. Live his message every day. And demand that your neighbors, your friends, your loved ones, even pray for your enemies, that they may live this message too. Amen. If you, and if you feel a little bit better, hopefully you do it now, leaving, than, than you did when you, when you walked in. Uh, I know all of us here on this stage hope you will pass that off to everybody in your hey, world. Everybody. Your family, your neighbors, your friends, anybody that's homeless that needs help in your neighborhood. Everybody. Please pass a little love on. That's yeah. how we do it. You know? Thank you so much to Nolan Williams and the Let Freedom Ring Choir and Orchestra. We should... And our musicians. Yes, we should. We're yes. going to quickly introduce our, our, our little, our, not our little musicians, but our little band. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so classy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> On the drums, Mr. Gene Lewin. <laughs> On the bass, Mr. Mark Vanderpool. <laughs> On piano, Mr. Ted Firth. And also on the piano, Mr. Andy Einhorn. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I know, I, we, I know. we're going to do this song. We can never do it standing any way other than this. On this it's, configuration. It's weird. It must have been, this is how we did this well, originally. Well, when you're did four we? and seven and you learn something. Yeah, I know, that's true. I mean, we were imprinted very <laughs> yeah, early imprinted on very uh, early. <laughs> how, how to, to do this. Uh, I, I think, um, you know, if, if there's anything that Dr. King left us, it's, um, um, it's we, we are a part of a continuum, and we're all on this world together, and we are all working together to try to make it better for, for each other, and especially for our children, for the generation that comes after. Uh, the song that we're going to do is from Ragtime, of course, and um, it's the song that Kohlhaus sings when he holds his child in his hands for the first time that he didn't even know he had. Now, all you all out there with children, the first time I held my child, I thought, <laughs> <laughs> it was like one of the most terrifying things. They're going to give him to me? What, what, they, they, we, they, we keep him here like, like three months, right? And then they send him home? And they said, no, no, he's yours now. I said, you know, I don't know anything about that. But Kohlhaus, that's not his reaction. What he sees in this child is hope his dream, his hope for the future. So we want to leave that hope, that dream in your hearts as well. Thank you so much for having us.
that wasn't a message, I don't know what is. Yeah, that was divine. <laughs> I see his face. I hear his heartbeat. I look in those eyes, how wise they seem. Well, when he is old enough, I will show him America, and he will ride on the wheels of a tree. Down south. Go down south. See my folk. Won't they take to him like cats to creep? Then we'll travel on from there. California, oh, who knows where? And we will ride on the wheel. Yes, the wheels are turning for us girls, and the times are starting to roll. Any man can get where he wants to, if he's got some fire in his soul. We'll see Justice Sarah and plenty of men who will stand up and give us our due. It's more than promises, Sarah, it must be true. A country that lets a man like me own a car, raise a child, build a life with you, with you. With you.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending the 17th annual Let Freedom Ring celebration.